Police whistleblower Patricia Morgan Mashale is once again unable to leave a safe house that she has been using over the past two years. But she is with us now. Welcome, Patricia. Um, thank you so much for having me, Chris. Good afternoon. Patricia, tell us about the latest development. What has happened to you now? Um, the latest development, Chris, is that I received information on um, Saturday that um, there was a meeting uh, between Tele and uh, two crime intelligence generals which, whose names are known to me and as well as uh, other few people whom I exposed in, 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 the, in my public platforms on Facebook, the corruption that I exposed. And um, I received a, a, a message from my reliable source, the source always gives me the information that uh, they had a meeting um, uh, to try and trace my location through the, um, you remember there was illegal uh, spyway equipment that uh, subs procured in, in China. And uh, apparently now there was also a Chinese uh, national at a meeting who is going to assess them with the equipment because they don't know how the Equipment. No one of them ever received any training on the equipment. So this gentleman is going to assess them with the equipment to try and locate, um, to try and locate me. Patricia, what could be behind this now? I think the fact that um, I have been, remember the last time when I had an interview with you, um, I have exposed that um military camps and I didn't I never stopped because I'm I'm as I said I'm a whistleblower and even when there is corruption or crimes uh, committed I am going to ex since I cannot report it to to a police station or any police office because they still they are still not uh, acting on the information that I have been given given them I have given the information to the national commissioner I have proved uh, that uh, me and Professor Dahas have been given information to the National Commissioner. He never even acknowledged uh, on the emails, on the, on the WhatsApp messages, neither me or my uh, uh, um, complaints that I, uh, or Mary's complaints that we sent to you. He never even acknowledged. So I decided that if that's the case, because remember, I'm complaining here about senior top officials in SAPS. I'm not just complaining about ordinary junior members. I'm complaining about top officials. So I decided that if that's the case and uh, he's not interested to act on the information, then I'm going to expose it on my public platforms and I'm going to name the people who are implicated in this corruption. And I think uh, I also named Taylor in cases they were opened against Tele, the dockets are just somewhere. Uh, no one knows what happened to these dockets. These dockets are still active because no court has ever withdrawn these dockets against Tele. So Tele's name was all, is also on my on my public platform. So I I I, I think I think I believe it's because of this uh, public uh, uh, information and the people that I've been naming in this uh, corruption. Is the reason why they want to silence me because I'm getting information on a daily basis and I'm sharing information on a daily basis in my public yeah. Patricia, I don't know how you keep going. You have su suffered three years of persecution. And in July, you were finally acquitted of an apparently malicious charge. But now I understand that your lawyer can't get a copy of a judgment. Remember, the judgment was delivered on 30, the 30th of July, and we have been struggling since then to get the copy of the judgment from court. Uh, our lawyers have been sent from Pana to post. There was, there was some stage when they were told that, um, that the docket cannot be, be located. So since then, we are struggling to get the court. Their lawyers cannot do anything. Uh, without a judgment, they need a judgment to proceed with uh, with 
criminal uh, uh, cases against the implicated people. They need their judgment to proceed with civil litigation, and they need their judgment to proceed also with criminal cases against the prosecutor who are responsible for this malicious prosecution because she was also defeating the ends of justice. And um, we received a message last week from a prosecutor at court saying that all prosecutors have been instructed to not handle my all my dockets. My dockets will be handled directly by the DPP. All the do- my dockets is in the office of the DPP. So I believe the DPP is sitting with a judgment and the DPP is refusing to, to, to hand over the judgment to my lawyer because that is the instruction it was given to, to, to people at court to not uh, handle my matters. If I want something, I must write an email or a letter to the DPP. I did send this voice note uh, from the prosecutor that was sent to, to, to my husband to the to, to Provda House, and she said she will take it up with, with, with not even the NPA because the NPA, we have been complaining to the NPA since forever. Uh, there is an advocate, the cop there, the NPA will keep on referring our complaints back to the very people that we are complaining about here in Tristate Tristate DPP. Um, uh, and, and, and even Professor Da has this state, he replied in a very arrogant letter to her to say that she's not my legal representative. I must get a lawyer to communicate with them. Imagine lawyers cost me money. So to get a simple judgment, I must now go and pay a lawyer to, to write them an application to get a judgment. Patricia, since our last interview, have you been contacted by state security or by any senior police office, officers uh, to make affidavits or to give them further information? I have been contacted by state security. I will not mention the names because um, I don't want to jeopardize their investigation. But yes, I have been contacted by state security and I did give them my, my statements. Mm-hmm. Uh, and anybody from the inv- Independent Investigative Directorate? No. I put? I must, no, they, they, they've not contacted me. I have been in contact with them because all the complaints that I sent to the National Commission that I also submitted it to I put in, they at least acknowledge your receipt and I can see uh, they, they, they forwarded the, the, the complaints to an investigation officer. That just today I received the, another acknowledgement to say that uh, they received my complaints and they have appointed an investigation officer to investigate his complaints. But now Professor De Haas has advised you not to meet with any police official uh, or any state security official uh, privately or in person and that should any other affidavits be required from you that they should get them through your lawyer? Yes, um, because I was supposed to meet with uh, two brigadiers um, uh, uh, regarding the complaint that Prabhda has sent to Parliament. And uh, they just want... About your treatment. About my yeah. treatment, yes. And they just wanted a supporting uh, affidavit from me because she's the complainant in that matter. And uh, it's final that they have to travel from... from to, to get an affidavit. So, uh, Prabhda has sent them after we received that information that uh, SAPS is trying to, to locate me. Uh, we decided that I'm not going to, to jeopardize or as my safety to me to the regular. Uh, so, Prabhda has uh, sent an email earlier to them to tell them that if they really need an update affidavit, because I mean, I, 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 uh, all the evidence is in, in the file that she, she 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 sent to Parliament. I don't also don't understand why is a supporting affidavit because um, she is the complainant, and uh, I already confirmed all the information on all my social media platforms and all the complaints that I already sent to even to Parliament. I also sent complaints to Parliament. I sent complaints to the special investigation unit. I sent complaints to the national commission. I mean, they can use that information because I'm the one who's the complainant in that method to support um, our complaint. 
So yes, um, I, I, I am not going to meet with them. She already sent them an email to inform them that their meeting is not going to take place. Mm-hmm. Prof- Professor De Haas has also written a letter to the police minister to ask him to urgently investigate this incident, this tracking incident uh, that you have been tipped off about, uh, Patricia. Do you have faith in the new police minister? I know you certainly uh, didn't and don't have it in the previous one. I, I never had faith in the previous minister for obvious reasons. Remember, um, I, I, I reported corruption to him as far back as 2005. So I would, I, I really would want to have faith in the current minister. I want, I want to give him the benefit of the doubt to see uh, whether he's going to act on, on, on. I remember there's a lot of complaints that, that, that a brother has in myself submitted to his office. So I want to give him space to to, to, to see if he's going to act on this information and um, not judge him based on what uh, transpired uh, between me and the previous minister of, of, of police. So yes, uh, for now, I'm giving him the benefit of the doubt. Well, I'm going to say something very chilling to you now, uh, but... I recently spoke to a police officer about your case and he said to me that there were policemen taking bets on how you are going to die, whether it will be a natural death or in a car crash. I'm sure it's not the fir- first time that you have heard that, Patricia. No, it's not the first time. Um, you know what? I, I also know that I'm, 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 I'm not going to die in natural bed, even when I die. But I want everyone to know if I die, and nature out there that the police is responsible for. It. I want everyone to know. I know. I don't. Know, I just don't. I. You know what? Not knowing when is some give me some kind of comfort. Uh, but I know I'm going to be killed by the police. You know, Patricia. Every time I get a message from Professor Haas, I uh, I go cold because I think something has happened to you. You must feel like a marked woman and and. Uh, it tells me to the bone that you're saying you know that you are going to die at the hands of the police, and yet you are, you keep going. You know what? I had to make friends with reality, and I had to tell myself that um, as long as there's no action from the government, as long as there's no action from the president, uh, I had to just make friends with the reality that is going to happen. It happened to Babita. The president was there. Who? They didn't know who killed Babita. It happened to Armand. It's known that even the guy who killed Armand was released on bail. Uh, so as long as the president is turning a blind eye, now we, 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 we just uh, I just read an article, I think it was two days ago, uh, where they said that there is a whistleblower hit squad, which is consisting of police officers. So um, the information is out there. Everyone knows about it. These people are known. The president read newspapers. He's, he's, he's watching the news. He see that there's a hit squad who are killing whistleblowers. But as long as the president is condoning, then we as whistleblowers must accept the reality and love for it. We don't have a choice. Patricia, if you could have your life over again or your career in the police over again, would you do it any differently? You have a family that's gone through immense trauma. I would I would do it. I maybe I would have cons- if I would have watched a video of what was going to happen if and when I expose this corruption. I would have had some kind of doubts. But on the other hand, my my conscience would not have allowed me to keep quiet. Uh, so I would have done it, Chris, knowing that I might be killed in the process. Because you know what? Um, this I'm talking here about if you can see what is currently happening in this country. 
as I said, the whistle blows up being killed and the president is just quiet. I I wouldn't have wanted my kids to grow up in a country where they don't have a future. Because that is where we are heading if if people are not standing up and talking out and, and, and just just make a noise uh, and make whistleblower fashionable. Because I have a hashtag on Facebook and Twitter, uh, uh, let's make whistleblowing fashionable. And I'm proud to say that police officers are now making whistleblowing fashionable. Because now a lot of police officers are now standing up as a general from another province of court, and he said to me, said, Patricia, do you know what you caused? And I thought that there was something wrong that I did. And he said, no, 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 no. You made police officers to stand up for the truth because the way we are receiving complaints and information of corruption from police officers now is amazing. So I'm proud to say that at least I made an impact. People are now not afraid anymore, although most of the, them uh, uh, choose to remain anonymous. But they are reporting, they are reporting to me all the information that I'm getting, I'm getting it from police officers. So not even just from from, from police officers, even from other uh, government departments. I recently exposed the corruption that is happening at Senate, like here in, in Free State whereby the CEO of Centric doesn't even have the, the relevant qualifications. He's using fake qualifications. Uh, and, and I reported it to the SIU, and it's confirmed that the CEO is using fake qualifications. You know what, Chris? People die. People are being killed because of corruption. And families are mourning their loved ones. And we just decided to, to, to look the other way. People are now standing up. They are not looking the other way anymore. They are reporting this corruption. And I can safely tell you that something is happening in the police. Something is happening at Centric. Something is happening in other government departments because whistleblowing has become fashion. Thank you. That was whistleblower Patricia Morgan Mishali speaking to Biz News about the mortal danger that she has lived in ever since she started exposing corruption, but vowing to continue. Thank you, Patricia, and I'm Christine. Thank you so much, Christine.